Okay, we are in uh, notes 23 now, um, about a third of the way through. Um, we've already discussed uh, dispersion uh, praxial equations, um, and we're about to go into retarded coordinates. Um, and uh, uh, we're on uh, uh, on page 82. So we have just developed using the Muir recursive square root approximation. Uh, right or wrong as it may be, it's accurate enough, and it's gotten us to an intermediate state where we have developed a 45 degree uh, one-way extrapolation equation, which can represent waves going up or down depending on the whether we pick the plus or minus sign, the minus sign for upgoing waves for migrating under the uh, exploiting reflector model. And it has, uh, instead of just um, uh, second derivatives, like we find with the 15 degree extrapolation equation, uh, it has um, third derivatives. Okay? It, it, if we go to fourth derivatives, then we're really talking about a uh, 60 degree extrapolation equation. Okay? This is an inter intermediate step. And this has four terms for us to put through uh, finite differencing. Okay, uh, and that is still um, you know we'd like to reduce the number of terms in, in so far as possible. And so, uh, given that uh, we're using upgoing waves uh, and paraxial wave equations, there's this concept of using what are called retarded coordinates. We we make the uh, coordinate system itself follow the wave up. Okay. And in that way, we can lose one of those four terms and only have three terms to uh, finite difference. Okay? So on 80, page 83 now, uh, in notes 23, um, we have um, uh, an introduction to uh, this retarded coordinate uh, uh, concept. So we have a vertically propagating wave field with uh, constant velocity. And using that uh, simplification, let's shift the coordinate system so it stays with the upgoing wave. All right, and we'll just attempt a uh, coordinate transformation from the coordinates that we uh, x, z, and t that we're already quite familiar with to the retarded coordinate system, which is the primed coordinates x, z, and t again. And uh, uh, x prime is equal to x, z prime is equal to z. So no, you know, really no transformation there. But t prime is retarded because it's um, it's equal to the time t with something added. Okay, so it's uh, it's going to be later than it should be. T prime is later than t by how much? By z over v. Okay, which is the amount that the wave is uh, is going up. Okay, so this is a coordinate system for a retarded coordinates for an upgoing uh, upgoing waves. Which of course we're using for the exploiting reflector model. Now this, uh, you know, here we're using a constant v, and we'll talk about uh, how to get away from that in just a second. So uh, we're going to uh, begin with um, our uh, <clears throat> our downward continued data, you know, whatever slice of it we have, uh, x, z, and t, and we're going to convert it to um, a uh, retarded coordinate system where uh, uh, you know x is equal to x prime, z is equal to z prime, but t is equal to t prime minus z over v. All right, so that's just solving for uh, t instead of t prime. And uh, this uh, uh, retarded wave field, we won't call it p anymore. We'll call it q. Okay. So Q will show up in uh, a lot of our programs, and it's really the pressure wave field P, but in retarded coordinate system, in this moving coordinate system, which is x prime, z prime, p prime. Now, of course, we need the uh, Jacobian of the uh, retardation, uh, the relations between the uh, derivatives, right? Because we're, we're essentially wanting to um, uh, create less of these terms. You know, each of these terms involves a whole bunch of uh, derivatives. So we gotta we gotta have the uh, know what uh, an x derivative and what its relationship is to a uh, x prime derivative, right? And uh, and that's how we will retard the whole equations by knowing the 
uh, knowing how to retard the derivatives. All right, so what does DDT uh, become? All right, and uh, let's, uh, let's put the uh, coordinate transformation up here. And so, uh, uh, you know, you're following the chain rule through, uh, uh, through all of them, DDT is going to be equal to um, uh, DT prime with respect to DT uh, times D, D, uh, excuse me, D, DT prime, okay? Plus, you know, following the chain rule, we've got to check out, are there any other relationships? Uh, it's going to have added to it DZ prime in its relationship to DT, and that's going to scale uh, the uh, 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 how much of d dz prime we've got to add, and then we got to make sure we got to look at the relationship between dx prime and dt, and have that scale the uh, any addition we need to make from d dx prime. Okay, so uh, you know what is the derivative of x prime with respect to t? Well, x prime is equal to x. And uh, dx dt is equal to zero. Okay, so there's no addition there on the on the right hand side here. And uh, the relationship between uh, z prime and t, well, z prime is equal to z, so dz prime dt uh, is also equal to zero. So there's no addition of d dz prime. Okay, uh, and then dt prime dt, right? Dt prime with, differentiate with respect to t. Okay. Uh, that is, uh, there's just a t there. This term has nothing uh, related to t, so it just gives us one. So ddt is equal to ddt prime. Okay, surprise, surprise. Uh, let's look at um, uh, dz, and um, so we have uh, uh, d. You know, this is what we're going to substitute in uh, for ddt, ddz. And uh, ddx, all right. So uh, 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 let's uh, let's take a look. Um, dt prime dz. Uh, let's see. We take uh, the uh, uh, the derivative of uh, t prime with respect to uh, z. And uh, the z derivative of t of the t term uh, gives us zero, and the z derivative of the term z over v that that leaves us with one times one over v. Okay, so we got one over v times d dt prime. And uh, uh, okay, I'll just keep uh, scrolling here. Um, and then the uh, relationship between z prime and z. Okay, will give us a one. Okay, so we have one times uh, d d z prime, and then the relationship of x prime versus z, right? X prime versus z gives us a zero. Ah, but here you know we do have to add something, right? In uh, everywhere in the equations we see a z derivative, we've got to substitute one over v times the uh, d t prime. And plus d d z prime, okay, and then at least we get a free pass on the x. I don't have to add anything from the x side. Okay, so the you know converting from a z derivative, which you know our our wave equations do have some, uh, you know becomes two terms instead of one. So how is that going to eliminate a term? Well, y you'll see. Okay, uh, now what about the x derivative? Okay. Uh, T prime has no relationship to x, so that's uh, zero. Z prime has no relationship to x, so that's zero. X prime uh, is equal to x, so uh, dx prime dx is one, and so d dx is equal to d dx prime. Okay, no problem there. Um, and so here's a summary of what we substitute into our our wave equations. All right. Um, <clears throat> So for uh, the time derivative, we just substitute the t prime derivative. For the x derivative, we just substitute the x prime derivative. For the z derivative, we have to substitute two uh, derivatives, you know, added together: one over v times dt prime plus d d z prime. Okay. Um, so let's let's try converting some one-way paraxial wave equations 
Uh, for upgoing waves now, all right, I'm going to choose that negative sign where I where I have that possible, okay, and uh, you know put it through, <clears throat> and let's see what happens uh, when we um, uh, when we put them into retarded coordinates, okay. So uh, we take the five degree uh, 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 two term upgoing wave equation, okay. Uh, which is dp dz is equal to 1 over v times dp dt, right? p sub z is equal to 1 over v times p sub t. So um, <coughs> the z derivative converts to 1 over v times, now, now in the retarded quarter system we have q, not p, so dq dt prime, <coughs> so that's q sub t prime, plus, okay, we have uh, 1 times uh, dq dz prime, all right? And then the t derivative becomes one over v times uh, dq dt prime. Okay, uh, so oh, we got three terms instead of uh, two, but but look at what happens here. Uh, on both sides, we've got a positive one over v dq dt prime. So we just we just strike that from both equations, and all we've got left is one term. Right? We've got dq dz prime is equal to zero, all right? Which means that the wave field doesn't change, okay, as we follow it up, all right? I mean, it changes in z, right, because, uh, because uh, it's moving up, but it doesn't change in uh, z prime, which is following the wave field up. So, uh, uh, you know, we, we've simplified the wave equation with the wave equation because we're following the upgoing wave up. Uh, can we reproduce this with the uh, with the others? Okay, the fifteen degree has three terms. Got the second derivatives: d squared p dz dt is equal to one over v d squared p dt squared minus v over two d squared p dx squared. And so for the z derivative, we've got to factor in uh, the uh, uh, the one over v uh, dq dt prime plus the uh, uh, dq dz prime, right? And then each of that gets the time derivative. At least I don't have to compound the, uh, the two, right? So we have 1 over v d squared q dt prime squared plus uh, d squared q uh, dz, d, dz prime dt prime, and then uh, equal to 1 over v. Uh, and so the first term on the right-hand side of the equation is uh, uh, d squared p dt prime. And uh, and so it just becomes one over v d squared q dt prime. Okay, and then here's x derivatives; they don't change. So we have a minus v over two d squared q dx prime squared. All right, and you can see that um, uh, on both sides we have a one over v d squared q dt prime squared. Right, we strike that from both sides. We got two terms left. Okay, only two terms to find a difference. That's going to make our initial attempts at finite differencing much easier. We can handle dips, structural dips, uh, angles of propagation under our exploding reflector model, uh, structural dips up to 15 degrees. Okay, so this is useful, and we've simplified it. Upgoing waves, holding to our uh, uh, holding to our uh, our assumption of the exploding reflector model, uh, and so what we're left with is. Uh, uh, d squared q dz prime dt prime is equal to minus v over 2 d squared q dx prime squared. OK. Uh, now the 45 degree equation. Uh, I'll, start, I'll start using my, su my, um, uh, my uh, subscript notation. Uh, I'll start voicing that more. Uh, so uh, p sub ztt minus v squared over 4 p sub zxx is equal to 1 over v p sub ttt minus 3v over 4 p sub xxt. All right, so the, the z derivative, okay, becomes um, 1 over v, um, uh, you know, dq dt uh, plus uh, uh, q sub z prime, uh, and, and that was t prime over there. So, uh, you know, this one term here, uh, p sub z t t becomes 1 over v q sub t prime t prime t prime plus uh, q sub z prime t prime t prime. 
And then this term here, v squared over 4, minus v squared over 4. OK, we, we'll keep the minus v squared over 4 out here. And then the uh, z derivative again becomes uh, the q sub t prime plus the, the q sub uh, uh, z prime, right? So we got 1 over v uh, q sub t prime z prime, um, excuse me, q sub t prime x prime x prime plus uh, q sub z prime x prime x prime. Right, and we get, still got to factor the whole uh, minus v squared over four into there. Um, on the right hand side, you know, basically no change. We got one over v q sub t prime t prime t prime minus three v over four q sub uh, x prime x prime t prime. Okay, and so that results. I uh, have to get to the next page, eighty-five here. Uh, let's see. Uh, after taking out, uh, let's see, what are we losing here? We're losing the uh, the three t derivatives, right? Because those are the same on each side, right? So we strike those, and so instead of having four terms, um, we have uh, z x x t x x. Um, there must be something else that we can strike here. Um, and I'm looking for it, because we only have three terms left. I strike those two, I still got four. Uh, there must be something, oh yeah, yeah, well let's see, z, uh, t, t, that's x, x, t, oh okay, the t, x, x, and the, uh, and the x, uh, x, x, t, uh, all primed. Okay, uh, I'm gonna start to drop the primes, of course. Um, you know those uh, also combine. So really, we just have uh, three terms left: uh, q sub z prime t prime t prime minus v squared over four. Uh, q sub z prime x prime x prime is equal to minus v over two. Q sub x prime x prime t prime. Now, now notice, uh, you know, a lot of what we'll do involves moving these equations around and our uh, terms of these equations around. We might put everything on the left side and have it equal to zero, be equal to zero. Of course, that's going to change the signs we see. Um, we might uh, spread out the. Uh, we might solve for one of the uh, one of the terms. Um, you know, it's very tricky to keep track of the the negative signs as you're doing all that. So as we'd hope, the uh, retarded equations for uh, 15, um, 5, 15, and 45 degrees all have fewer terms and are going to be easier for us to find a difference and find a useful <coughs> uh, downward continuation method, you know, up to fairly high dips. Uh, you know, we could go through and try retarding the full acoustic wave equation. I won't, uh, won't go through the detail of that. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, because we're only following half the wave field with the retarded coordinates, right, we're, we're not following, uh, we're only following the upgoing wave, say, um, and we're not following the uh, the downgoing waves, so uh, we start with three uh, with three terms: uh, p sub z z plus p sub x x is equal to one over v squared p sub t t. We end up with three terms in the uh, retard in retarded coordinates. Okay, even for constant v, and it's uh, p sub z prime z prime plus q sub x prime x prime is equal to minus two over v q sub z prime t prime. So there's no no gain there. Uh, you know, we, if, if we have waves going in all directions, we don't we don't have any reason to use a retarded coordinate system. Uh, if you remember the uh, 15 degree praxial wave equation, though, in, in retarded coordinates, you might remember that um, it's got uh, um, uh, it's uh, uh, q sub x prime x prime is equal to minus two over v q sub z prime t prime, right? And that's like Two thirds of the wave equation. The only thing that the full wave equation has that the 15 degree uh, retarded equation doesn't, amazingly enough, is this d squared q dz prime squared. So if we assume that that term q sub z prime z prime goes to zero, then you know really what we're what we recognize we're doing is we have a uh, a 15 degree approximation to the full wave equation. How about that? So our even our, our simple 15 degree equation, you know, it's a it's a crude approximation, but it's a it's a you know kind of a logical approximation to our uh, uh, to our full wave equation. You know, in, in and we can see that 
by putting them both in retarded form. Amazing. So um, uh, that gives us a uh, uh, th that gives us a way of of uh, uh, of handling this, uh, of thinking about uh, what what our our wave field approximations are are bringing us. And I, I'm sorry that I I forgot to um, um, uh, I, I forgot to uh, uh, rotate these uh, these pages before. Um, and, uh, uh, okay, I've got to select the, uh, the pages and rotate the correct, uh, the correct one. All right. Bear with me for just a second. Um, while I remember how to do that. Uh, let's see. Uh, page thumbnails, that's how I do it. Now I can select this page and I can rotate just that one. Okay, so we're a little better off now. Um, I can collapse that and collapse the tools. All right, um, and uh, go back into read mode there. So uh, on page eighty-six, uh, and and you know people have used this over the years. Uh, I give you a whole summary of the uh, uh, of paraxial equations, and um, <clears throat> you know these are for uh, constant velocity, just for simplicity. Uh, they don't even allow um, uh, downward. Uh, they don't even allow uh, right the z direction changes in velocity. Uh, that will not be so hard uh, to arrange as we'll see, and we'll even uh, be able to touch on uh, x-direction uh, uh, changes in velocity. So um, <clears throat> we have a uh, um, we have the degrees of dip or or angle of propagation that that uh, below which uh, is uh, reasonably accurate. Okay. Uh, so we'll look at we have in this table five degree, fifteen degree, forty five, and sixty degree equations. All right, um, you know nobody really uses sixty degree equations uh, because we go to uh, wide angle methods, uh, summation methods before we um, uh, we find sixty degree equations to be uh, particularly effective. Uh, but there it is to show you the logical development. This is the Muir continued fraction square root expansion, you know, starting at one, uh, and uh, and then with its further uh, expansions there, showing the um, the uh, recursive nature of it. <clears throat> and here's the uh, dispersion relation that results from that uh, uh, from that approximation. And uh, for that and the next column, which is the paraxial wave equation that gets uh, the paraxial wave equation. Um, you know, we've preserved uh, plus for the downgoing waves and minus for the upgoing waves. Okay, so you can take your pick. Um, in uh, lab eight, you will use um, uh, downgoing waves, and so that's a that's a warning. You'll have the uh, uh, you know you're going to use an advanced uh, uh, wave equation instead of a retarded uh, wave equation, and um, uh, and you're going to be using the positive sides of this. Uh, for migration, you're going to use upgoing waves and the retarded uh, equations, just like I, just like I showed you. <clears throat> and the um, uh, so you see here the uh, dispersion relations, you know, getting uh, successively more uh, complicated as as time goes on. Basically, in uh, especially in terms of the uh, power of uh, omega, right, um, that you have to clear from the denominators. And then um, uh, the uh, wave equations that, that we've developed, two terms for the 5 degree, 3 for the 15, 4 for the 45, and uh, five terms 
uh, each with uh, fourth derivatives for the 60 degree. Okay, but a, a very nice progression of, of difficulty there, and and uh, you know the you don't really get to diminishing returns on this until you uh, computationally, until you have um, uh, until you until you get get to sixty degrees. Forty five is well worth uh, implementing for extra accuracy and extra dip. Um, for uh, uh, now, the on the right hand column is the retarded wave equation. We're actually going to finite difference and use. Um, why you know how do we how are we going to get our waves into the retarded coordinate system in the first place? I'll, I'll have to show you that. Okay, um, that's a that's a trick uh, that will uh, that will do. Uh, so uh, we have um, uh, uh, we have uh, you know one term for the five degree, two for the fifteen, three for the forty five, and four for the sixty degree. Okay. So uh, you know we 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 can have a whole uh, progression here, uh, and you can pick the one that you that you need to use, and find a difference it. All right. So um, you know migration methods using these uh, previous uh, these page eighty five uh, table of equations, they can be called phase shift migrations. Okay, and they also can be uh, made to work for velocity as a function of z. Okay, now let me see if I can uh, uh, <clears throat> if I can uh, zoom to um, uh, fit the width. Uh, apparently not, since I rotated that page. All right. So um, how do we uh, adapt retardation to uh, uh, velocities as a function of depth? So, so the first way we'll do that is we recognize that there's going to be this, hopefully I've made it blue, true velocity, which varies in x and in z. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, uh, since for a lot of what we do, we're, we're only going to um, uh, think about, uh, at least at first, we're only going to think about a vertically variable velocity. We're going to take this true velocity, which is a function of both x and z. It's got non-zero derivatives in x and z. Take that true velocity field, and we're going to we're going to take its horizontally average, its horizontal average at every depth level, right? So that's going to be called v bar z, and I'm going to I'm going to try to uh, to make that uh, uh, red, perhaps, um, but it'll certainly have a bar over it, and the bar means uh, averaging, but only horizontally. Okay, so we're not averaging vertically. So v bar, okay, the horizontally averaged velocity can have any sharp variation in velocity uh, with respect to z. Okay, just like a well log. All right, but it doesn't allow you know basin edges and things like that. It's it's gonna it's gonna be uh, uh, averaged horizontally over our entire um, calculation field. Now. Um, uh, how we should average it? That's a good question. Um, you know, I would prefer to average it uh, in uh, slowness. You know, compute the arithmetic average of slowness horizontally rather than uh, uh, rather than the arithmetic average of velocity itself horizontally. Uh, but that's kind of a nicety uh, in 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 the cases where we will you know set uh, blue v the true laterally variable velocity against the horizontally average velocity, the red v bar, um, that's not going to be an issue. The, the horizontal velocity differences will be slow. Okay? And we're going to refer to that as uh, you know, thin lens uh, effects of velocity. All right. So with those slow variations of velocity, it doesn't really matter how we compute the velocity average. In defining the retarded coordinates, you know, we, we set the uh, 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 we set the uh, t prime to be retarded to be equal to t retarded by adding some time t zero. All right, and we we had made t zero equal to z over v, the depth over the velocity. Okay, so that worked for constant velocity, and so now you know we're recognizing that we're adding a, a time t zero. Well, we can just sum it up, you know, over whatever uh, to whatever depth we're going. So it's a um, it's an integral over the uh, over the inverse of the velocity, 
okay, from, you know, t0 is, uh, is an integral from 0 to z of uh, dz over v bar uh, of z, okay? So that's, uh, you know, depending on the depth, we get a different, uh, a different uh, retardation, t0. <clears throat> and that's going to uh, help us, you know, go from uh, uh, the wave field p to the retarded wave field q. Now, in the, in the frequency domain, okay, interestingly enough, now we're, we're going to use kind of a mixed uh, coordinate system here. And I, I didn't really introduce this properly in the notes, but let me, let me tell you now. Um, we're actually going to keep our um, uh, we're going to keep our data in the x domain. We're not going to horizontally transform it, but we're going to transform it from t to omega. And this is always pretty easy, right? Because we don't have uneven spacing in the t domain. I mean, we might well in the x domain, but in the t domain, you know, we always have even spacing. We always have the same number of time samples. We always have the same sampling. So. You know, it's it's very easy to do a transform from t to omega uh, with almost any data set. So uh, and and we get certain um, uh, uh, help by leaving our our migration in the omega domain. Now we're going to get away from that uh, later on, but for now, you know, we, we still have the z domain, so we can have uh, velocities that vary in z. We still have the x domain, so we can have velocities that vary in x. We can have uneven, uneven spacing in z or in x, right? So, you know, uh, we can do a lot, but just by transforming to uh, omega, you know, from t to omega, we find we have an analytic solution for the retardation, okay? And it's just a time shift. We use the, sh you know, the retardation is, is adding, you know, t plus t0. It's a time shift, okay? So, so the time shift, you know, according there's a Fourier theorem for, for a uh, the Fourier shift theorem, okay. And that means that in the omega domain, we multiply by e to the i uh, omega t zero. T zero is the time shift, right? That's the retardation. So, uh, you know, we take our our data in z and omega, and we. Uh, 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 we multiply. You know, actually, I should, probably should have done this. Otherwise, uh, oh no no the retarded data time times e to the i omega prime t zero that's that's fine uh, you know it's, it's, it, are we shifting forward or back are we shifting into q or out of q and this is the shifting out of q okay uh, so so we can do our, all our calculations in the retarded domain then we want to go back to the actual um, actual uh, uh, you know z domain instead of z prime for instance. And time domain instead of uh, uh, instead of t prime, right? And you can see the Fourier dual of t prime is just omega prime, right? So we just uh, we just do this this ap apply the shift theorem. So that's how it's going to work. We're going to you know at every z level we're going to uh, do our downward continuation, you know, based on a retarded wave equation, and then we're going to shift it, you know, with this simple sh application of the shift theorem in the omega domain, actually omega prime, back to uh, back to the unretarded domain. Okay. Now, now uh, uh, we are going to need dpdz for substituting into the into the appro approximate dispersion relations, and we need dt zero dz, which is equal to one over uh, uh, v bar of z prime in this case. But remember, z prime is equal to z, so that's not too much trouble. Um, we uh, we need that uh, you know to put into the uh, equations everywhere we see v right so uh, uh, you know here's uh, dp dz is equal to uh, dq this is the uh, uh, oh okay, okay so everywhere in our wave equations that we see dp dz we got to substitute you know this this is the retardation for um, uh, for the uh, uh, um, this is the retardation for the um, uh, for the uh, v bar of z, right? It's vertically varying velocity, horizontally averaged, you know, from from some real, you know, laterally laterally varying velocity field. Okay, so um, you know, everywhere we see a z derivative in our in our original, you know, unretarded wave field, to retard it, you know, we we had uh, uh, we had put in um, 
you know, uh, substituted a two-term uh, z derivative, right? Uh, and here's what it is uh, for the uh, uh, in the omega domain. Okay, so it's uh, everywhere we see the z derivative again in the in the omega domain, we have uh, uh, q sub z prime times e to the i omega prime t zero plus uh, q. Okay, that's the wave field itself, so that's that's undifferentiated. Times uh, i omega prime over v bar of z prime. Okay, times e to the i omega prime t zero. Okay, um, and uh, uh, so uh, uh, d p d z. Okay, uh, it, we could pull out uh, factor out the e to the i omega prime t zero and um, and then uh, uh, we can put in these two uh, these two terms dq dz prime plus i omega prime over v bar of z times q itself, the wave field. Okay, so now uh, let's form some uh, retarded equations from the dispersion relations. Okay, and uh, you know looking at the five degree right, what we've really got here is uh, you know dp d I'm sorry. Uh, uh, K sub z, right? Uh, the z direction uh, uh, wave number is uh, uh, plus or minus uh, omega over v in the five degree equation. Okay, that's the five degree equation. You know, minus for upgoing waves, and the velocity referred to here is the true velocity. You know, the blue one, which is uh, v is a function of x and z, so it varies laterally and vertically. Okay. So here's our uh, here's our dispersion relation, and we use the same tricks, okay, for uh, uh, for uh, you know converting this to a, a, a wave equation. But we're we're not gonna we're not gonna take it out of the omega domain, right? So uh, we we want to recognize dp dz, and so we we multiply both sides by um, by i and times the wave field p, the unretarded wave field. So we have plus or minus that's equal then. To uh, plus or minus i omega over the blue v, the true velocity times uh, p, the wave field, and uh, so then we can solve. So we then we can recognize that dp dz is equal to plus or minus i omega over v times p. Okay. So then we substitute in uh, the uh, solution here, right, for the the dp dz. Okay, which is really all okay. So you just substitute that in on the left side, still in the omega domain. So we have e to the i omega prime times t zero uh, times the quantity uh, q sub z prime plus uh, i omega prime over v bar of z prime uh, times q, uh, and that's equal to what we had on the the um, uh, on the right hand side, right? Because we got to retard it now. Right, so uh, 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 plus or minus uh, uh, i omega prime over the true velocity uh, times uh, q times you know undifferentiated times e to the i omega prime t zero. Okay, so we've got the the retardation there in the frequency domain. We've got the um, the uh, uh, we've got the vertically variable. And horizontally average v bar of z prime or z doesn't make any difference. We put in the uh, the definition of the uh, the z derivative of the wave field right on the left side. We got the uh, retarded wave field on the right side. Okay, and so we combine this and we get dq dz prime right, which is what we need for downward continuation. Okay. And we find that it is a you know this fairly simple factor times the um, times the wave field itself, okay. And the the factor you know it involves the retardation. It involves the uh, the horizontally average uh, v bar z, which is brown, okay. And it involves the true velocity. So so you know what happens here. Right, we have uh, in in here, you know, i times uh, plus or minus uh, uh, i times this quantity omega prime over v blue minus omega prime over v bar of z. Right, what if what if we started, you know, 
what if there was no x variation in, in the blue v, right? It was exactly the same as the v bar of z, so no, no lateral variation, right? Then this, uh, this is going to give us 0 in here, and we have dq dz prime is equal to 0, which is the, the 5 degree equation that we had. But now we've adjusted uh, by, by just handling the, uh, uh, the v bar z, suddenly we have a solution where we have laterally variable velocity. And it's not too complicated. It can actually work. Okay. Uh, all right. Now here's a 15 degree equation. Okay. Let's let's step it up a bit. And um, you know, again, we recognize where we have the true blue v. Okay. I should have it uh, on this term too. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, next to the uh, x derivative, right? So uh, you know, we we convert to dQ dz, and um, <clears throat> And, and this is, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to convert all the way to x uh, just for uh, illustration, okay? So uh, uh, we do the substitution for uh, uh, dp dz, and uh, we see we get basically the same thing, uh, you know. So as as we go up in the in the uh, degree of difficulty and the dips we can handle, okay, we're still um, we're still seeing this this same term here, where we're setting off the uh, the true velocity, which can be laterally variable against the um, against the horizontally averaged, you know, vertically variable velocity, the blue versus the brown, and uh, if there is no lateral variation in velocity, or we you know we're just not ready to to deal with it, then that term is zero, and we have you know the same equation that we had for constant velocity. So this is a a, a brilliant simplification. Okay. Um, and uh, can bring us uh, a lot of uh, a lot of facility, and another reason why we we might be tempted to leave the uh, uh, leave our calculation in the omega domain because we have such a simple a simple solution, right? A uh, very simple solution for um, um, uh, a very simple solution for uh, 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 doing this in the uh, in the omega domain. You know, just a shift theorem. Uh, multiplication, so we can we can handle now. Uh, you know, dropping out of this is an ability to handle some lateral velocity variation. Okay, how about that? So let's separate the terms. All right. Um, you know, uh, in the five degree equation. All right. Then we only we only have a uh, um, we only have a, a, a anything at all, any change at all, if there's lateral velocity variation. In the 15 degree equation, okay, we can separate it out and, and identify this this term over here that only has a presence if there is lateral velocity variation, and we call the the one on the left, the one in brown, you know that uh, we call that the thin lens term, right? So we allow we can allow here some lateral velocity variation, and um, uh, in this way. Um, we can separate it from what we're doing, you know, the the x derivatives, and and uh, that's all wrapped up in this kx uh, uh, term here, uh, and that uses has to use the real velocity, and and perhaps we can if we implement that in in uh, finite differences. Okay, so that that we call the diffraction term. Okay, that's you know the curvature of the wave field uh, in uh, 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 laterally, right? And uh, that's important, of course, for the 15 degree and for the 45 and the 60. But we find at the root of all of those, okay, is this thin lens term that actually lets us handle the uh, lateral velocity variation despite being in the omega domain. Okay. So uh, you know we can we can now uh, handle you know a vastly uh, expanded uh, set of velocity models because velocity can vary vertically in any way. Uh, and uh, you know, if we want the thin lens term to be small and to work well, uh, then we can only allow um, velocity to vary horizontally uh, slowly. Okay, you know, no abrupt uh, base and edges or anything like that. But uh, that that can work. So we have a propagation term and an interaction term. We got the diffraction term. We got the propagation term, which essentially is doing some some of Snell's law here. All right, interesting uh, way of of looking at that. Uh, the constant velocity retarded equations on page 86, they all give the diffraction terms. And they're equally valid for 
velocity as a function of x and z, all we have to do is add the thin lens term. Okay, and the thin the solution of the thin lens term is analytic in the omega domain. Okay, uh, we have uh, dQ dz uh, prime, which is plus or minus i omega times one over v blue minus one over v bar uh, of z, which is uh, brown. Right, every all these blue v's should have x and z after them. Right, and and so here's the the analytic solution. Right, which is just a shift theorem. So it's a you know if we're if we're downward continuing from z one to z two, we got to integrate from z one to z two, uh, you know, and and we're contrasting them in slowness, you know, one over v, uh, which is a function of x, against uh, one over v bar, which is a function only of z. And uh, we do a shift based on that uh, t zero on that retardation, okay, and here we come to a really signal part of. Um, the definition of migrations, okay, depth migration, okay, which is supposed to get depth more accurately, includes the thin lens term. All right. Now that means that you have to know something about the lateral variation in velocity, okay, uh, and and the um, and that that takes a lot more work, okay, than time migration, okay, which omits the thin lens term. And means and and you use that you know there's there's no point in using the thin lens term or or any other depth migration as they're called uh, there's no point in, in using those when you don't have the lateral variation in, in velocity characterized okay if v if v is a function of x is poorly known then uh, there's no point in using a thin lens term because that'll just confuse the issue more. So you you know whether you're going from you're using a, a five degree or a or a sixty degree migration, uh, if you don't have that lateral velocity variance information, you might as well use time migration. Okay, but if you do have it, there's an easy way to include it, and Lab Eight will explore that. So in, in practice, at each z step of downward continuation, we split the process by first applying the thin lens extrapolator. And then subsequently the diffraction extrapolator, or we could do it the other way around if we wanted to. And you know, so long as our, our z steps are small, you know, it's it's uh, it's fine. It works just fine. Okay, the the uh, very the, the variations we get will will be uh, no problem. So now that we have a set of wave extrapolation equations that can handle, uh, now we have a set of wave extrapolation equations that can handle some smooth. You know, laterally variable velocity. You know, you know, the way I write it is that uh, the v as a function of x and z is close to the horizontally average v bar, which is only a function of z. And here, uh, you know, is the uh, analytic solution for the uh, retardation, right? Uh, just to just to remind you and write it in a convenient place. Okay, so we got we 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 also split split the retardation uh, solution. We'll also split uh, split out at each z step. You know, so we'll separately uh, uh, solve the retardation. We'll separately solve the uh, uh, the thin lens term. Okay, and uh, so that it, we are we are ready now to get into finite differencing and figure out how we can actually solve these uh, these uh, equations.